clear here in the Pacific Northwest Puget Sound area, Grow Zone 8B, and it is a gorgeous, sunshiny Sunday morning, and I cannot wait to share with you guys all the work we have put into our garden spaces this week. Um, it is slowly but surely starting to come along. Um, spring is the time to dream, and what I've been dreaming of is just seeing flowers upon flowers upon flowers and butterflies and bees everywhere so with that being said i'm going to share with you guys some of the most common um uh, butterfly larval host plants for sw uh, swallowtail butterflies and um just how simple it is to plant what they need to thrive um, also at the very end i'm going to show you guys one of the most amazing adventures we've gone on recently and that is to a tulip farm out in, here in washington and it was one of the most beautiful almost like fairy tale is this even real kind of places that i've been to in a while so i can't wait to share you all the things with you um come along and see see all the business busyness we've been up to this week we are still working on getting these hedges under control and it is a laborious achievement but we're doing it little by little and one of the fun surprises about this is i did not know that cherry laurels had beautiful flowers so it's been fun getting to find these cute blooms a couple of weeks ago my husband bought me this as a surprise a little uh, picnic table for my chickens and i just got around to putting it together this week and it's perfect because we have kitchen scraps to feed them practically every day and I had been throwing it in just into the coop and they're fine with that but I thought this would be just such a delight for them and of course for me to watch them eat and be fancy so this has been one of my little joys but they also got other treats this week these are army worms and they equal bad and so we get to experience the circle of life. And the chickens will get themselves a little sneaky snack right before bed. Some nice protein. So there you go. So this week I am just now getting around to starting some flower starts. At this point, honestly, I'm probably going to just do some chaos gardening that's what i usually end up doing i try to start off kind of organized and have you know decent plans of doing so but then when it comes down to it i just i don't have the patience for it so you know i'm just trying to use some leftover waters that my wonderful family left behind with their backwash <laughs> and um you know waste not want not so making a slurry of some dirt and water to make some little seed starting cubes. This is my first time using this mini seed blocker and it really did make some really great small and adorable seed blocks and I'm doing it this way versus making a bunch of bigger pots to start out with because I'm you know I'm always skeptical that anything's going to germinate and it's funny because most of the time it germinates just fine and i have no issues but for whatever reason you know gardening t tests my faith in god and his ability to bring these seeds through and i am always always in awe and in surprise every time like they aren't created to do this like which they totally are and i find you know god's creation so amazing in that they have a job to do and it's not up to us to make them do it they perform they're meant to so i was telling a friend this week um who was nervous about starting her own garden and wanting to do it right and perfect and as a very imperfect gardener i can tell you these plants they don't need you like sometimes they just fail sometimes that's just life but it's not up to you to make them grow they're gonna do it in this tray i'm starting two different varieties of celosia two different varieties of snapdragons two different varieties of dahlias and two different varieties of zinnias and i 
while I'm I've never started a solo show and I've heard that they can be hard hard to to get going um but the zinnias I'm just doing this in these pots for um for an experiment um as a my number one recommendation for new gardeners somebody who wants a quick win um a definite win get some zinnias they are um they they are very prolific they're great at germinating they grow phenomenally they grow really tall and beautiful and the best part about them is that they can um they are cut and come again flowers which means that once they have a bloom and it's and it's um you know to the right um level where a stem is um, stiff you can cut it and it will produce another flower and it'll keep on doing that um you know kind of the more you cut it 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 wants to come back so that is my number one recommendation um and then also the snapdragons i have never started from seed before actually i bought one for like you know a dollar fifty at a plant sale um I, I think i bought like two of them and they lasted for like two years um and i did not know that they were cut and come again or else i would have been cutting them all over the place and bringing them inside to look at but they um they are very hardy and they will um will keep producing if you cut to have some some beautiful flowers in a vase inside and then i just covered this tray in some saran wrap to trap the moisture in and this was planted i mean these were all started about three or four days ago and there's already some um some growth coming out of the zinnias and a few of the dahlias that's a good good news and uh, I'm just waiting for the other stuff to come up. So funny story time of the week. But I happened to walk into my husband's office just as he was Googling jewelry for me. Um, it He had literally, I kid you not, typed in how to show my wife that I love her, which is so sweet and so cute and you know heart meltingly adorable um but i asked him I was like hey you're not planning on buying any of those for me are you and he's like well i was <laughs> and i was like well you know what i would actually love the most is if you would go <laughs> buy me some dirt please and help me put it in my garden so that is what he did and um just like anything else around my house it very quickly um ends up with our kids right in the middle of everything helping out um and and causing havoc but but helping in the best way possible um so that is what happened and so they were able to get all the dirt that i needed to finish that back garden area and um i am don't have footage of it because my camera messed up and like my my phone died in the process of um filming it but after I got this set up, I was able to uh, grow three different varieties, or I say grow, planted. We'll see if they grow. Um, three different varieties of sunflowers in these rows at the end part. And then I also planted um, about six um, dahlia tubers that may or may not be viable. I, I bought them kind of a long time ago and forgot about them. So we'll see what happens with that. But you know, a plant that's not a, a root or a seed or anything that's not planted in the ground um, is definitely not going to grow. You never know what happens once you do. So you got to you gotta shoot your shot and, and, and go for it. And I did. Okay, so I just got busted by my neighbor, um, asked me what I was doing. I was like, oh, I'm going to plant a bunch of these, these uh, gladiolas in lilies and more gladiolas and dahlias up here in the front and that that other area besides the picket fence and he was like well what you need a tripod for for that <laughs> so i had to come clean about my channel and um i don't know why i, I put it on for you guys to watch but i really <laughs> it feels so awkward to uh <laughs> my neighbors to know what i'm doing um but but he's really he's a really encouraging guy and he's him and his wife are actually both master gardeners, um, so they're probably looking over the fence at me like, mm, girl, I'd probably do this this way. But <laughs> um, anyway, they're good they're good people. 
But yeah, so I'm gonna, like a, I don't know if I'm gonna use the other footage, but I had talked about these. I had these in my mudroom for like two years, so I don't even know if they're viable, but there's like 50 of these. So I'm gonna plant them sporadically um, in this bed, up um, over the picket fence. And uh, these I just bought, so I know these hopefully are good, but I definitely want some tiger lilies more than anything. Uh, my grandma had some in her yard and they always made the summertime just so, you know, magical. So, all right, I'm going to get to work. Nothing too exciting to see here other than I'm using this auger attachment on my husband's drill. And let me tell you something. I did not actually use this last time my son did. And I did not film it, but I darn near broke my freaking, of course, already hurt arm with the stupid drill because I did not do it on the right setting and it swung the drill, connected, it was in the ground and um, and I was push pushing the button and it literally swung around and banged my arm. Y'all, I was not built for, for construction, but... I'm still somehow getting some stuff done here. So I'm up here um, putting these remaining uh, gladiolas around and I'm going to plant two dahlias up here along this fence line. Um, I just put this in. This was randomly in my yard. It's nothing fancy, but my idea is to have this or a nice flagstone at some point and then have some red brick kind of like lines coming out from it that way and then this way so that I can kind of have like a pathway to walk on and break this up into kind of fourths. That way I'll be able to not stop and compact down my dirt. I'll be able to kind of reach and, and deal with and tend and weed um, the areas in these quadrants and uh, so that's my idea, so be on the lookout in the future for that. So this season, I really want to focus on having some butterflies and hummingbirds and things like that come visit my garden. And what is super important and beneficial for them and for you, if you want to see those, is you have to have um, what are called larval host plants. And uh, one of the most commonly recognizable um, butterflies are the uh, swallowtails. Now they have a lot of different varieties, but um, they are typically um, yellow and black. Um, sometimes have a dominant yellow uh, background. Um, sometimes have a dominant black background. Some of them have a little bit of blue in there, um, but just go on Google, look them up. They're gorgeous. Um, also people recognize uh, monarchs and they have a host plant of milkweed so whatever your um, area that you live in there is milkweed certain uh, suited for your grow zone so look that up I'm trying to cultivate some of my own right now my first batch died but what's the easiest thing about the swallowtails is their larval host plant are in the carrot family so if you have carrots and you notice some caterpillars munching on the ends it's not a bad thing it's probably a swallowtail caterpillar um, they also love to lay their babies and hatch on fennel, dill, parsley. Um, if you're familiar with Queen Anne's lace, that's also in the uh, family of carrots. Um, so do yourself a favor. Google all that stuff. But the easiest things that you can probably find at your nursery right now is fennel, dill, and uh, parsley. So I'm going to plant some fennel right here in this garden bed and I'm going to plant um, some other ones. I'm going to plant some dill in the front front bed up here and then I'm going to plant, plant some parsley in the back because I want to make sure that these butterflies are visiting all my garden areas. So we're going to start off with this. plant this uh, dill right here. Hopefully I didn't just plant a, um, a bulb right here. We'll see.
All right, so I'm gonna plant, um, I've got two parsley plants. So I'm gonna plant both of them back here. All right, so now we have at least four larval host plants out and ready for our butterflies to take advantage of to lay their eggs, um, become little baby caterpillars, turn into chrysalises, and become more butterflies. If you're worried about the population of our, um, of our pollinators, such as bees, butterflies, um, hummingbirds, we need to make sure that we're putting beautiful flowers, but we also need to make sure that we're putting things in our yard that they're going to be able to reproduce on and feel comfortable doing so. So those are just four examples, but you should absolutely get on there and look at more. If you want to learn more about this in depth, you absolutely should follow my sister, um, Butterfly Gardening, um, Gulf Coast Butterfly Gardening um, channel. I'll link it in my, in my description. Um, she is a legit gardener. Like she knows what she's talking about. She's asked, she's been asked to plant butterfly gardens in her hometown for the, their public library. She's, she's good. <laughs> I, anything that I share with you about butterflies or what to do, it's because I learned it from her. Um, and I will send you that way. Okay, enough of me yapping about my yard and what I'm planting. I have got to share this gorgeous place with you. This place is in Mount Vernon, Washington, and it is called Tulip Town. And it was founded by people from Holland. And we know that they are the experts on tulips. So they brought their expertise on handling tulips and growing massive, massive amounts of them here to Washington State. And one thing I can absolutely say is my paltry camera skills and cinematography skills do not do this place justice. There's one lone tulip hanging out with dandelions just trying to blend in. And, uh, and then here are all the massive amounts of beautiful rows just as far as I can see. It, I can't even describe what this makes you feel when you're walking through it. And they sell the bulbs at the end of the season in the fall time. So I am absolutely going to be buying some of these gorgeous varieties from them. Thank you guys so much for sticking around with us and seeing all the little intricate pockets of busyness we've gotten into this week and everything that we've been able to accomplish um, to work just a little bit closer to the goal we're trying to achieve. So I hope you stick around to see us bring that to fruition. Um, I hope you enjoyed our little adventure we went to this week and I hope you're getting out on your own adventures this springtime and not letting this gorgeous weather go to waste. You guys have a wonderful day and I'll see you next Sunday.